Hello, everyone, and welcome to Citizen of the World, the podcast. I have a surprise for you this week as we're going to be doing a book review of one of my favorite books, a really inspiring and educational and just powerful book by Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. So this podcast is dedicating to highlighting the big takeaways from Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. This book is refreshing and can be a truly helpful in helping you awaken to your life's purpose. This is definitely a thought-provoking podcast with everything in life I suggest you to have an open mind. In this podcast, I'm going to walk you through tackling questions like, I don't know what to do with my life, and the ego definition. We're also going to talk about the ego and the various role identities that we play in society, as through that process we can find out who we truly are. Learn to change your perspective and how to let go of the past and how to let go of anger. From Eckhart, we learn a simple mantra, this too shall pass and how we can embrace suffering as an opportunity for growth is something we're going to look at today. At the end of the podcast, receive tips from Eckhart Tolle on how to awaken consciousness with acceptance, enthusiasm, and enjoyment. So in the new earth, the teachings of Eckhart Tolle help us align our daily actions to our spirituality with the objective to create a better world. By being better versions of ourselves, we can make the world a better place for ourselves and the other people we meet and the people in our families. Ironically, this is also the motive for my podcast, Citizen of the World. By fulfilling our true purposes, we make the world a better place. So who is Eckhart Tolle anyway? Eckhart Tolle is now an award-winning, best-selling author and spiritual teacher He was at the brink of suicide when he realized that he wasn't conscious. He grew up in a household with fighting parents and had a difficult childhood. However, his suffering brought him to a place to write this book as well as many other books. He claimed that if he didn't go through the suffering, he wouldn't be a spiritual teacher today. And I believe that every action brings us to where we are today. So the lessons in this book should really be taught in schools internationally wide. This is what young people, adults, everyone needs to hear. It's a revolutionary book that is truly life-changing as it asks us to go deep within ourselves to find the answers to our everyday problems. So some of us are still awakening to consciousness and just tapping into your spirituality So some of what's mentioned in this podcast might be far-fetched, and that's all right. Wherever you are today, thank you for tuning in, and give yourself some compassion, some love, and maybe a hug for tuning in today, because this is a thought-provoking podcast to really get you thinking about your life and your life's purpose. So this book is really well known internationally. In fact, Oprah named this book a life changer and continues to have Eckhart Tolle star regularly on Oprah's Super Soul Conversations, the podcast. Eckhart's teachings are spiritual, truthful, and have impacted the world of many. So let's get started. Become inspired to get out of your comfort zone, follow your dreams, and live a purposeful life. On Citizen of the World, the podcast, hear inspirational stories, thought-provoking discussions, and learn about different cultures. Learn about the world to learn more about yourself. Citizen of the World inspires action outside your comfort zone to follow your dreams. Break away from social expectations and become motivated to follow your dreams fearlessly. You too can become a citizen of the world. Because by stepping outside our comfort zones, we fulfill the light within us that is wanting to shine brighter. Make the world a better place by shining your light. Citizen of the world believes in collaboration rather than competition. We can all learn from each other as our light shines brighter in collaboration with others. I'm your host, Kathleen Parisien, and be sure to tune in to weekly podcasts and to subscribe directly on my website, 
www.citizenofd.world. Do you ever find yourself asking, I don't know what to do with my life? In Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, I've learned that our true purpose is being conscious and aware in the present moment. So completely forgetting about the past, not worrying about the future, but definitely just focusing on what is now. Yet so many people spend time asking themselves, what should I do with my life? And are just caught in not knowing which direction to take next. The real question should be, how can I just be? Are we causing anxiety, stress, and depression into our lives by trying to do too much? What if just being who we are today is what you should be doing with your life? But how can we tame our minds and thoughts to live a more peaceful life? This is what Eckhart teaches us in The New Earth. As Tolly says, where you are in the present moment is where you should be. And by being fully present and conscious to the present moment, you can do whatever it is that you're doing with full attention and grace. When we're truly focused, we allow creative energy to flow through us. So who exactly is Eckhart Tolle? I first read Eckhart Tolle's famous book, The Power of Now, back in 2012. If only I had read The Power of Now back in kindergarten, as I would have saved myself a lot of time and money. I read The Power of Now when I was in Brazil after quitting my 9-to-5 job in Canada. I was on a mission of self-discovery to find my true purpose. And this is what my book about is about, Citizen of the World. It's my quest for finding out what to do with my life. I kept asking myself, what should I do with my life? And so I took off volunteering in Brazil, backpacking South America, and then moving to Israel for my master's degree. All of this was living outside my comfort zone for two and a half years. The growth and personal development I experienced was tremendous. The book is my adventure of letting go of the past and living in the now as best as I can, putting into practice the work of Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. And now here we are 2020 and I was just in Jamaica where I was reading Eckhart Tolle's new book. Well, it's, it's 10 years in the making, but new for me is that the new earth awakening to your life's purpose. And this book gave me so much. It's truly life changing. And that is why I really wanted to share this with you um, so that you can also get something from it without having to read the whole book. You can just listen to my podcast. So Eckhart starts off the book by talking about the flowering of human consciousness. He talks about flowers and why flowers. Eckhart explains that Jesus tells us to contemplate the flowers and learn from them how to live. Eckhart interprets this as flowers symbolize true nature, as they come from a seed and they sprout into a flower, blossoming more and more every day. Eckhart explains that the flower is like a messenger from another realm. Flowers like crystals and precious stones and birds are all one life, one consciousness. Eckhart quotes, Even someone with little or no presence can occasionally sense that there is more than the mere physical existence of that form. People are drawn to flowers, babies, puppies, because they are all new forms of life. The flower, crystal, or birds show a window to humans into the formless. To recognize life and formlessness is awakening to consciousness, and this is extremely powerful. Um, Next time you're walking in a forest, observe all that is around you without labeling it. This is just to sense the liveliness that is around you, and this alone can bring peace and joy to us. This is the art of flowering of human consciousness. A quote from Eckhart Tolle, You do not become good by trying to be good but finding the goodness that is already within you and by allowing that goodness to emerge. But it can only emerge if something fundamental changes in your state of consciousness. So by awakening to the present conscious now, what is happening now and what is in the existence liveliness form, 
this is where we can start to have transformation for our lives um, towards things that we want by letting go of old habits and moving towards something new. So let's go into the ego definition. This, this is really profound at being able to let go of the past and move on with the present. So the simplest ego definition is the thoughts in your mind that keep going and going and going without your consciousness. Habitual ways of thinking and acting based on a mental fabrication. So it's all social constructions of what we've lived through our lives based on our environments and, and our, our learning habits. So usually the ego is developed in your childhood and then continues to grow into adulthood until you actually get a chance to, to reduce it. And this is what A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle really talks about, is by defining the ego, we can transcend it. Eckhart talks about an illusionary self, which is the ego. And by basically using the I statement, you're talking about yourself, mine, and whatever is, is me. Which is actually in misleading because I, capital I, embodies a misperception of who you actually are. I is just an illusionary sense of self. It's the ego. The development of I, capital I, happened when we were children, when we were taught my toy, my things. And so this developed us into adults, into things being replaced by bigger things. And so we get attached to these things. And we start to suffer if we don't get this or don't get that. And this is pure ego. It's brought, the suffering is brought upon us by our own attachment. But the key here is that these thoughts are not actually who we are. It's only the ego. So there is hope for us, according to Eckhart. So learning to let go, a quote from Eckhart. Letting things go is an act of far greater power than defending or hanging, hanging on, end quote. I understand this from quitting my 9 to 5 job and, quit and traveling the world. I sold my house, car, and just had a backpack on my back. The act of letting go of everything was rejuvenating as I was able to function without the heavy ego dragging me around. Instead, I could just be conscious to the present moment. Traveling, seeing new places, meeting new people is important for learning to let go and disidentifying, disidentifying with your ego. Because when I came back to Canada after traveling for two and a half years, I could see that my priorities had shifted. I cared more about spending time in nature, spirituality, and just being. I just wanted to relax. While others continue to obsess about material things, as if they were looking for their own happiness within them. A quote from Eckhart, Ego is always identification with form, seeking yourself and thereby losing yourself in the sum forms. End quote. And so as I mentioned, my book entitled Citizen of the World is my experiences of backpacking South America and seeing so many different perspectives. And this is where I found out that happiness is not in things, because I had learned to detach myself from things and connect to my inner spirituality instead. My spiritual awakening is very obvious when you read the book, Citizen of the World. I stop identifying myself with thoughts and instead with the greater whole that is life, presence, and consciousness. The ego and role identities. The ego makes us think we are above others because it thrives from competition. But disidentifying with the ego means being humble and present, treating everyone the same from the janitor at the gym to the CEO of your company. This is what it means to feel aliveness inside of you. What thoughts are you holding on to in your mind of how life should be? We see this a lot with parents, parents expecting their child to be this or that. But what has this mother's expectations of her own child done to herself? Like for example, if a mother only focuses her life on solely fulfilling the roles of being a mother, what happens when the child leaves at the age of 18 and maybe goes to university far away? 
what happens to the role of the mother at that time if she doesn't have another purpose for being, right? So instead of being there for your children, let them be who they want to be. This is what Eckhart Tolle advises, is that give them space to just be. This is the case for if you get married, if you're a wife, or if you have a job, a high-performing job. Like We are not our, these entire roles that we fulfill. They are just part of our identity. So Eckhart has a lot of chapters dedicating to exploring the ego more in detail, and I highly recommend that you do pick up this book so that you can do more discovering of what the ego is and how to combat it. Finding out who you truly are. Since we just learned that the thoughts in our mind are not who we are, then who are we? Eckhart reminds us appreciation, assistance, and being loving to in the environment and everyone we meet. This is how we can determine who we truly are. We cannot receive what we don't give, right? So Eckhart talks about outflow determines inflow. So seeing abundance around you instead of limitations, but also not to react to situations. When something happens in your life, how do you react? Are you upset or pissed off for days? Who does this serve? Let it go. And that moment of letting go, that consciousness within you is who you truly are. So let's do a little exercise right now through paying attention to your breath. Just take one breath in and one breath out right now. So we'll do it all together. And now do it again, but this time take a few moments in between breathing in and out. And that space between the two breaths is who you truly are. So again, in. Take that space and out. So Deepak Chopra right, talks about this often. And even just by a little breath like we just took, that is meditation itself. If you don't already meditate, I would highly encourage you to start just by going on YouTube for a 10-minute meditation, guided meditation. It has such powerful effects of just calming your mind and letting you be still. And through the stillness, you you do find yourself. Another option is to change your perspective. It's not the thoughts we tell ourselves who we are. For example, I worked so hard to become a sales manager for a company I work with. I had this image of myself of coaching, inspiring, helping others to become better sales representatives. But then when I actually got the job, I could see it wasn't for me at all. So it was so obvious that it was my ego that wanted this from me. But the more that I became enlightened to what I didn't want, I was becoming conscious to what I did want. So can you think of something of how your ego had motivated you to do something and then when you had it, it just didn't feel right? So one question I get a lot is, how do I let go of the past? Let's address this. In my book, Citizen of the World, Chapter 1, I dedicated it to learning to let go of the past. And so I want to read a part of the book from you. Imagine you were walking up a steep mountain with a pack sack on your back. The pack is full of rocks. These rocks are metaphors for what you carry as a result of life. The rocks could embody the weight of a failed relationship, trauma from your childhood, or even expectations that you hold for yourself. Whatever they are, they are weighing you down. As you try to climb the mountain, you almost run out of breath because it's a daunting task to carry your own body. In addition to these burdensome rocks, You begin to lose energy and become dehydrated. You take a break to reach for water, but realize you forgot to pack water because all you had room to carry in your pack sack are these rocks. Society, 
friends, and family allocate a lot of burden onto us to be, do, and act a certain way. What happens when we put down the pack sack, remove the rocks, and live the life that we're destined to live? So that was a part of my book, Citizen of the World, and you can really see how it's aligned with Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, as it's all about really letting go. And now we're going to be talking about letting go of anger. According to Eckhart Tolle, there's pain bodies in us that we carry along with us, just like I was explaining with the backpack. Pain and trauma from our childhood or later in life stay with us. And this is why energy healers and Reiki healers are so important as they can clear out blocked energy. The recent emergence of Eastern medicine in the Western world is a breath of fresh air as it's really a contrast away from big pharma and oh, the overprescription of prescription pills. Prescription pills that actually don't even address the root issue. So Eastern medicine actually goes deeper into the spiritual levels to actually let go of that anger. And Eckhart Tolle explains that we can let go of anger by detaching ourselves from the stories we tell ourselves. So depression, anxiety, and worrying is our minds associating what is happening now to a past story that is continuously playing in our minds. Bring about consciousness to detach yourself from the story. Eckhart recommends one mantra to repeat when feeling anxious. This too shall pass. This is how Eckhart reminds us to see that life events are neutral. There is neither good nor bad as we have a mix of both all the time and everything is always changing and that's why this too shall pass can give a lot of relief when feeling anxious or depressed or worrying and this too shall pass can give you back to this consciousness that is the present moment. This too shall pass acknowledges that things happen but you're still letting them go. And when bad things happen, you can say to yourself, this too shall pass. This is also for the case when good things happen. Good things will also pass. The key is learning not to associate a certain moment as good or bad, but rather it is what it is. It's also essential that whatever happens is temporary. By seeing everything as temporary, you're acknowledging the transience of life. The transience of life is the relief that so many of us seek. Eckhart advises us to accept the transience of life and all things to embrace change. He also employs us to enjoy pleasure without fear of loss or anxiety about the future and to detach ourselves from gaining any higher vantage points. That is essentially what being in the now is all about. Not allowing past experiences hold you back from being present with the future disidentifying with what was and continuously flowing like water to what is. When you no longer identify with the pain body, that's presence, awareness, and consciousness. Eckhart writes, when you don't identify with it, the pain body no longer controls your thinking and so cannot renew itself anymore by feeding off your thoughts. A shift in your consciousness is the awakening process. When you see it arise in the future, you might laugh. I find myself laughing all the time because now I'm witnessing my thoughts instead of connecting myself and believing that my thoughts are who I am. So I highly recommend this book to everyone. Um, it will definitely give you a lot of perspective and open your eyes to a new earth. Through awakening and being conscious, we are creating a new earth. As Eckhart writes, We are in the midst of a momentous event in the evolution of human consciousness, but they won't be talking about it on the news tonight. End quote. Eckhart advises that suffering is growth. Have you ever felt trauma in your life? Perhaps a heartbreak, divorce, or any kind of traumatic experience? How did this transformation affect your life? When we face crises, we change. In society, we are not taught how to handle difficult emotions. And so we often distract ourselves from feeling the difficult emotions instead of just letting them be. 
But as Eckhart says, and I quote, some kind of personal tragedy carries great potential for spiritual awakening, end quote. Through difficulty, there is a transformation or a rising in consciousness that happens within us. Through intense anger, we find a sense of sacred peace of being instead of reacting. This is about letting go of the ego and realizing that suffering is growth. Do you ever find yourself saying, I shouldn't have to suffer? Keep in mind, my friends, that this is the ego. In reality, as Eckhart advises, and I quote, say yes to suffering because you can transcend it, end quote. Awareness. Traveling alone brings awareness to the unconsciousness. In society, we're prone to identify ourselves by our jobs or the roles we fulfill in society. These jobs, positions, and titles are not who you are. You are more than you work. And while traveling, especially alone, your soul becomes free from these labels and you can just live apart from these societal expectations. So someone who could just define themselves by what they do to earn money is unconscious. I met a man in Negril who was not relaxed at all. He was had always on the go, had high-pitched energy, and right off the bat, I could feel his high energy. Within a few moments of meeting me, he was asking me what I did for a living. I found this to be totally out of the question, as hello, who cares, we're in Jamaica. Talk to me about something unmaterialistic. But unfortunately, some people are unconscious to a greater realm outside of identifying with roles. They don't see that there's more to life. Don't get caught in your ego. Rather, travel often or try something new as much as you can to explore and let your soul be free. Give yourself time to feel like a kid again. As Eckhart says, and I quote, Knowing yourself is to be rooted in being instead of being lost in your mind, end quote. Traveling helps us slow down the mind and just be. Taking time to sit on a beach and meditate while you listen to the sounds of the oceans go in and out, just like your breath rising and collapsing. It's okay to take time and give yourself a break and just enjoy being. That is why I love this book so much, as it's really about doing less Through the less you find yourself. As Eckhart writes, and I quote, Knowing yourself is being yourself, and being yourself is ceasing to identify with content. And now we're getting into awakened consciousness. According to Eckhart, there are three ways in which consciousness can flow into you and through you into this world. This is acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm. I quote Eckhart, Each one represents a certain vibrational frequency of consciousness. Whatever you are doing, if you can embrace one of the three ways, acceptance, enjoyment, and enthusiasm, you can start to awaken to your life's purpose, which is to be conscious. So, There's number one, it's acceptance. This is when you're doing like a mundane task, like doing the dishes or taking snow off the car. Instead of fighting what's happening, just focus on what you're doing and feel your muscles actually moving the the scraper and taking the snow off and just being alive in that moment. Don't fight what's happening. Accept it and give it your true presence. This is to embrace acceptance. Number two is enjoyment. Seek enjoyment in the doing. Surround yourself to the peaceful action of doing what it is that you're doing. So if you're waiting, you can enjoy waiting. Don't focus on that you're waiting. Instead, take time to focus on your breath and to appreciate the liveliness around you and just smile and be conscious to the present. Number three is enthusiasm. 
To have enthusiasm is not to be alone, but rather to move gracefully towards a goal. Eckhart describes it as an arrow enjoying the way of the journey. So enthusiasm is having a goal and going towards it full force. Enthusiasm and the ego cannot exist together. Eckhart explains to do something with enthusiasm is to enact a spiritual force. Can you relate to this? When you're enthusiastic and you're really motivated and you're on fire towards something, does that not feel like a spiritual force within you? And this is essentially what's so amazing about Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose, is that a lot of the teachings are something you can feel feel inside of you. So I'm Kathleen Parisien, your host of Citizen of the World, the podcast. Please reach out to me if you did love this podcast or if you have any questions or if you did relate to anything I was talking about, please send me an email directly at Kathleen at Citizen of D dot World. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember to let go of the ego and awaken to your life's purpose.